Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we are taking a look at the High Tree Kieran, the latest DSP Kickstarter to hit the scene. Before we get started, roll those credits. Okay, so we'll show you the unboxing of this in a minute, but what is DSP? So DSP is Digital Surface Projection. There were traditionally three types of resin printing up until now. There's SLA, which uses a laser. It's super slow, but expensive, and uh, the laser lasts a really long time. There's DLP, which uses a projector, similar to the way the Kieran works. When you use DLP, the lifespan is really, really long. It's very, very expensive and it's a little bit quicker. And then you have MSLA, which is traditional photons and any cubics and things like that, where you're using a screen and it's masked stereolith stereolithically or something like that. Um, and basically that has a shorter lifespan, but it's super cost effective and you can get nice high resolution. When you come to something like DSP, which is what Hightree have brought forwards, it's a hybrid of all of these um, of all of these technologies. So it has the longevity of uh, of using a laser, of using like SLA, because this has got an eighteen thousand hour rated lifespan. It's got the speed of MSLA because it's doing it at the same time, and it's got the low cost of MSLA as well but it's trying to fill that niche. It's trying to cover all those bases. So the Kieran will work with multiple resin printers. It will work up to a resolution of 271 by 169 um, in, in build volume. Basically what you do is you take a normal um, MSLA printer and you gut it. So you take out the main board, you take out the power supply, uh, you, t you leave the touch screen and it basically becomes a slave to the High Trees Kieran's engine. So you now put your USB in here, but you can still control the machine from up here on the touch screen. It means that if you've got an older broken MSLA printer, because you normally only get a couple of thousand hours out of a screen, you can completely gut it, remove all the UV um, array and everything from inside, and instead you mount it on top of the Kieran. And again, you can move the Kieran up and down to adjust the overall mask size, and that will let you print on different build volume MSLA printers. So we did an unboxing on this. The unboxing took us ages, if I'm honest. It came in a really big crate. Um, ours came pre-assembled. Um, no guarantee that the Kickstarter is gonna come pre-assembled, so just an FYI, but ours did come pre-assembled. What we'll do is we'll show you a quick time-lapse of what that looked like, um, covers the most of what was in there and, and sort of shows you some of the stuff that was in the box and how it was packed. So let's quickly show you that. <sighs> okay, so, uh, uh, oh, I don't even have asthma. The box is gone. Now we have the box within a box. Let's get this box open. Okay, so as you can see, 
It was super, super well packed. This one, as I say, came pre-assembled. It came pre-leveled um, and everything else. The Z-axis and the and the VAT are completely stock. The only thing that's different is there's a piece of Perspex where the screen would have originally been. All the gubbins, all the motherboard and everything else has been taken out and that has now gone down because the Kieran is doing all that work as well. The UV array has obviously all been removed, but you do still use the original touch screen. Slicers. So the slicer for this is Cheetu Box. Um, there, is a, a, there is a good profile on the, uh, on the USB stick, and, uh, and it's got profiles for all of their resins. So they've got a few resins that they sent us. They sent us a high precision resin, a red wax resin, and a speed resin. We've only tested um, normal resin. So we had, a, we, we, we've tested with a transparent blue Sunlu resin. And when we go into the actual review of this, we'll show you what their resins all look like and how they all print. But for now, We've just done, um, we've just put some translucent blue in, some sunlu that we had. And we'll show you those models in a minute. This is literally just the introduction to this machine because there's so much to delve into with this that we're going to have to do that in a separate video. The DSP light engine is 4K and it does print really, really cleanly. So we'll show you those models in a second. You can see they pick up all the detail. They're really, really good. So the biggest build volume this will work with is about 10.6 inches on a screen. So that would be something like uh, a Frozen Mighty 4K or uh, an Anycubic Mono X or something like that. If you have one of those machines where it's already broken, um, where the screen has died, you can convert it over to a DSP. There will be options in the Kickstarter for you to buy these with machines attached. So you don't have to go out and break your current um, MSLA printer to be able to get the Kieran to work. There really is very little setup with this. It's super, super easy to use. You pop your USB key in the side, you turn it on, your regular touch screen works. It's a Qi2 box based board and you're able to just start using it um, almost straight away once you've stripped out all the electronics from your old machine. You do re-level the bed based on the acrylic that you put in there because you may have got some slightly thicker acrylic, but the vat works exactly the same way, the bed works the same way, everything works the same as it does in MSLA. But you've got 18,000 hours of usage out of this on average, um, and that is you know close to 10 times what you get out of most MSLA machines. So the reliability of this machine is huge. There is a caveat to that in that it is quite tall. So, so you have to make sure you have the workspace to be able to have this machine standing up and then for you to be able to remove the hood as well. So it can be a little bit of a challenge to fit it in. We're really lucky. We've got loads of space here in the studio and we've got loads of space in the workshop as well. But I can honestly say this was way, way easier to use than I expected it to be. I loaded up their Cheeto Box profile, even though um, they've got the profiles are set up for their own resins. The, uh, the translucent blue that we used came out really, really nicely. So let's just take a look at how those prints came out. Okay, so first and foremost, we have the Syria Tech model. Now, we did this in translucent blue, we did this twice, and as you can see, we've primed this one so you can actually see the results because it turns out translucent blue doesn't give you the most amazing, uh, makes it quite difficult to see some of the parts. So you can see that it's done really, really well with the, um, with the crosses. It's done really well with these uh, cubes as well. So that's really good. The bridges that it's done back here are also really clean and really nice. The only real issue that we have is around the holes. So the holes have not come out um, the way that they, uh, they haven't come out as holes. Um, and the main reason for that, I think is just, we've got our burning layers slightly too high. So we'll adjust that and we'll move and we'll, and we'll sort of, we'll try to move it forwards. Normally we wouldn't put anything flat on the build plate, but these are test models. So that's the Syriatech ones. 
Then we have here the frozen test. So this is a super quick test that we tend to do to test again where our burn-in times are and how our models are curing. Again, appreciate that it's quite hard to see in the translucent. So we did a second one and we primed it. Um, so, uh, so you can see again, really, really clear. You can read the text at the bottom. Everything, is, uh, everything comes out pretty much as it's supposed to. The exposure time is a little bit higher for this very clearly. Again, we did it straight off with the Cyrotec model. So, um, so it's very possible that we just need to bring our, um, our cure times down a little bit. These were at 2.2 seconds a layer. I think this probably needs to be more like 1.9. So, um, so we need to adjust and redo those and that will come out when we do the review. These were just to show the machine printing and some of the details that it can pick out. And then last but not least, we have this model here. So this is done in, again, that translucent blue. You can see that it's still that translucent blue where we haven't primed it. This is primed, um, but there is no follow-up paint or anything else on it. It is just primed so that you can see the details on this. And my God, the details on this. This is a Jason Momoa head from uh, Wicked's Patreon. It is for the Aquaman model that we're doing at the moment. And just take a look at that beard detail and face. It came out gloriously, absolutely gloriously. The hair is all coming out here. You can see that the supports came out really, really nicely. There's no support scarring on this whatsoever. So it came out really, really cleanly. You can see all the sideburns on his face. Again, the only reason we primed this was so that, um, was so that you could see the actual detail because it was done in translucent blue. So, um, so once again, absolutely gorgeous details really showing what 4k on a dsp light engine can absolutely produce for you really really good so as you can see those prints came out exactly as you would expect a 4k printer to come out like that was with almost no changes to the chi2 box profile this is printing at a 2.1 second um, individual layer height and a 25 second burning time and between those it is absolutely powering through now there is a speed resin that they do as well which brings it down to about 1.1 seconds um, in cure time and then there's also a high precision resin that they've got as well and that one takes i think about 2.2 uh 2.2 seconds a layer so really really msla speed however you've got the benefit of of that of that SLA lifespan, and you're getting 4K. I'm really really impressed with what this can with what this can potentially do. I will caveat all of this with saying that this machine is a Kickstarter. Now, High Tree aren't new to Kickstarters. They've actually just finished delivering a lot of their Rocket Ones, which was their first phase of their Kickstarter profile. It's fairly important to note that some of that shipping had a couple of issues, but it is what it is. This is Kickstarter and it was their first time. They've ironed out all of those issues and they're now, and they're now pushing forwards with their second Kickstarter, which is going to be the Kieran. They're now well versed on how to do this and how to upscale their manufacturing. So I've got really high hopes that they're gonna have a much smoother delivery with the Kieran than they did with the Rocket. It's worth remembering that when you buy with Kickstarter, you are not buying a product. You are backing an idea. There is risk associated with Kickstarter, and that risk is down to you guys to decide whether or not it's something you really want to do. But that being said, I'm really excited to continue playing with this. We've got some more plans for some different models and for some different things to do. So stay with the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll have the full video coming soon. Catch you on the next one.